Hi everyone, I'm Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot and very happy to be here today. I've got a fascinating guest and that's kind of an understatement in this case. Uh, so his name is Cyrus Parsa and I'm going to bring him on the show right now and I, I just want to say that I've started to read one of his books and, and it's absolutely fascinating. So um, I think this is going to be a real treat. So Cyrus, welcome to the show. So what I want to do here is, is really go first to your background. And I, we do have everything on my website. So for those that are interested in following along, there's uh, links also to both books. And I'll just uh, basically run through your bio quickly and then, then we'll, we'll just have you augment all of that, okay? So, um, sure. so stand by here. Uh, so Cyrus Parsa is the founder and CEO of the AI organization, a loyal guardian security and social programming institute, uh, AI created to assist in making our society safer and better. Uh, so Cyrus has a bachelor's in international security and conflict resolution, a master's degree in homeland security. He's an expert on China and Iran affairs and has consulted on human organ trafficking, uh, anti-terrorism, vulnerability, risk, asset assessment, emerging threats to governments, agencies, people, and organizations. He lived in the mountains of China fighting with fighting monks as a youth, uh, 20 years of hidden research and development, and has a network of thousands of both Chinese and Westerners, and is has great insight into the threats we face from China, Iran, and Western interconnectivity. And I'm going to stop there. And basically, people that want to continue on your bio can, as I say, go to my website, projectcamelot.tv and Project Camelot dot um org or project camelot portal com they all go to the same place so cyrus welcome and i'd love to have you talk about uh more about your background and i want you to start off with uh the chinese monks and what you did with them how how did if you got into meditation etc and and maybe describe a bit of that and also why did you end up in security well I went to China because I spent roughly about 14, 15 years studying martial arts or being interested in martial arts, but I, I never thought it was the real thing. So I went to, um, you know, it wasn't really the mountain mountains, but it was, you know, maybe 3,000 feet up and it was an ancient um, monastery location. Initially, they had shallow monks. I wasn't very impressed with them. Um, I mean, they were fast, like you see in the movies, but it was something I other than that I was looking for. The reason why I went there is because I, for a whole year I was investigating all the research I had done for, for years prior to create a book to, to really alter the world and make it better and, and safeguard things that I, that I thought in the future would happen that would maybe hurt a lot of people on the planet. So I went there within the first couple of weeks I was doing, you know, just like, like they have the normal martial arts, kicking and punching, but I got into Tai Chi. There was an, um, a Wudang monk there, but dressed like a normal person. Um, and he, he, he started teaching me, got really interested. And the things he taught me were very interesting. There were Qigong and uh, Wudang arts, and Tai Chi, Bagua, Pikawa, Baji. Within two weeks, um, I was able to experience and sense things that people would think that would be like in the movies or, um, you know, the X-Men sort of, sort of things. And um, prior to that, you know, some people were saying that guy can beat up Bruce Lee. And I was like, come on, nobody can beat up Bruce Lee. But after doing what I was doing, I was, according to what he said, um, after two weeks, he said he's been doing it for 50 years, but within a couple of months, I'm going to surpass what he's done. And for the Previous 15 years, I was just doing martial arts, football, basketball, tennis, you know, my teenage years, also studying history and, and sitting down with, with people who know a lot about what's going on in the world. So, a so couple of things uh, I'll 
I don't want to go too deep because it's very really hard for people to believe. But there's something in Chinese called the Lao Gong point. That opened up for me. And, and I could literally send what, what you call energy out of my palms and I could move things from maybe three meters away or even have someone go, go back. So I didn't understand at the beginning how this was possible. But um, one of the requirements was he said, well, don't lose your essence, your energy. And I'm like, okay, uh, I watched a movie, uh, Rocky Balboa, and, he's like, and uh, Mickey's like, woman, weak in legs. And I remember, okay, Mike Tyson always would say, oh, he, he lost because he lost his essence the night before. So I'm like, I didn't understand how these things worked, but by gut feeling, I knew what was going on. So I, I trained maybe 16, 18 hours a day, combat arts, also meditation. And, and prior to that, by myself, I had done certain meditations that could feel things. So then something else opened up, what you guys would call the pineal gland. And I could see a lot of things, but I kept my mouth shut because I knew people w wouldn't believe it, especially back then. So my senses became really good. If, if you watch um, you know, uh, the movies about samurais or even some people who can cut uh, a speeding, almost a speeding bullet and, and catch it, I, I, my senses became really, really keen. Like I could see and sense things better than than maybe the the most quickest animal could, a tiger or something. But I kept everything to myself, and I was there about three months. And there's a lot more things I could say that are a thousand times more unbelievable than this. But other people who were doing this there, they didn't have these experiences, and I just kept my mouth shut. Went back to the U.S. I, I taught Tai Chi and martial arts, and I worked as a, as a bouncer in a nightclub. Um, and again, I was I was taking all these notes, and my goal was to write a book. And I went back to China again. I was there for about five six months, and I experienced more things that are really beyond. Uh, how, how would you say? Um, after the second time I was coming back, um, you know, AI people want to uh, model the human brain with artificial intelligence to be able to see the future. That means they think with quantum AI, you can see the future. I can exactly explain how this works. It's very simple actually. But the human brain is very powerful. When you open certain channels in the body, it connects to different areas, to your pineal gland, to all of your different, different places. That you can actually become like a quantum machine. Every, every human being actually has that ability innately inside of them. Um, but there's so many different requirements to be able to get to that. It's just so many things have to come into play. So in 2002, let's just say a lucid dream. I'm just going to say I had a lucid dream. And I saw a white guy become president or a leader of a country and assume it's the U.S. Uh, blonde hair and blue eyes and tall, maybe 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, and the whole world seemed like it was attacking him. And I was trying my best to get to him to advise him about certain things. And then it was like a digital war, white against white, black against black. And at that time, I'm like, why would white be against white? Because generally white is not against white. And this was 2002. And then it led to something else. It was chaos, all the streets, the whole world was in chaos. And and then um, it was like a civil war almost. Then something went around and I saw on CNN, it was a nuclear thing. And then some other steps happened. I was trying to mirror, um, this leader and trying to get to him, and I couldn't. Um, then 6.2 billion people died. And I saw some other things, let's say in this lucid dream, and I saw blah, 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 the steps afterwards. So it really frightened me in terms of the future. Like, What if what I saw is true? What if it's not true? I don't know. Um, I finished a book called Better People, Better World. Actually, it was called Incomplete Humans, Incomplete World. The book to save and change a better world, but I changed Better People, Better World. And there was a longer subtext, 800 pages and about 100 ch subchapters. Nobody will publish me. You have no degrees. Who are you? How can you talk about science and philosophy and geopolitics of everything and, and how the government should be run, all these things? But okay, fine. Go to school, BS, and mass, uh, Master of Homeland Security, go to a PhD program. They lowered my grade because I wouldn't promote pedophilia. And they, they had all these sneaky little things promoting pedophilia. And 2016, I see uh, Trump going up the escalator. I'm like, that's Trump? That's not the casino guy? 
<laughs> Wait a second. That's the guy in my dreams. So I never paid attention to him. I, I, I knew he had a, like a TV show. Never watched it either. So um, I'm like, wait a second. So I run up and uh, I have investigated all these companies for like 20 years in China. So what if there's something to that dream? And I say like people I know, even like devout Christians, I'm like, he's going to become the president. He's my dream. You're not Cyrus. He's not going to become president. I'm like, okay, watch and see. And then um, he became president. And then I see things coming, like what I saw in my, in my let's say, lucid dream. I'm not going to say some deeper things because it's hard for people to take these things. So um, long story short, I, I formed the AI organization after I formed Law Guardian. And I saw so many dangers. And investigate over a thousand companies, robotics, 5G, um, bioengineering, cybernetics, artificial intelligence, 500 Chinese, 600 Western. And everything that I, that I found and the simulations that I found showed extinction patterns and codes for humanity in stages in the next 20 years. And it all stemmed from China and its interrelationship to big tech. So, I discovered, let's just say, different things, not just investigating, but that there was something that was going to come into the White House to try to take out President Trump and Vice President Pence and conservative leaders around this country and injure the whole world. So I know, like, you know, people in the Secret Service and CIA, they have a narrow way of looking at things and they don't have too many people that can do certain things that I can do. They probably don't have anyone like that, actually. So I gave them a five page brief in the Secret Service, brief that I gave Secret Service and a Trump contact. And I, to I, I coined it Microbiotic Terrorism, MBT. Within Microbiotic Terrorism, I said that China's working on microbiotic drones. Um, but also different things talk to me. I put it in a note. I couldn't tell them what it was, but microbiotic terrorism covers, I said poison delivery system they want to use in President Trump, and it is coming from China, and it was extracted from big tech. So within this, there's nano, nanobot, there's viruses, there's there's drones like the WIS Institute had robo bees, uh, dragonflies by Draper, which I put in, in, in the books, and... And, you know, right away, they fly down to the West Coast, but I wasn't there. I was in D.C. <laughs> you know, they, and then they're like, oh, is this guy nuts? Or why is he, why is he coming at 2 a.m. in the White House? And, but then I went to another Trump contact afterwards, and then the Secret Service backed off. Um, I gave a whole list of things that the whole world is in danger of what needs to be done. And three or four steps were done. The fifth step wasn't done. So waiting and waiting, I'm like, Trump has so much income, just so I saw in my dreams, and I see the patterns. And the whole world is busy just fighting each other. And it's going to go to a certain point, and a lot of people are going to hurt. So I gave the former director of CIA cover-ups something he can accept, like because his brain works differently. I gave him a 62-page report, and it had sh charts, um, data, who the CEOs were, where the companies located, which Chinese companies, they're creating uh, machines, robotics, um, assassination systems, um, human targeting systems with not only just robots and drones, bioengineering, cybernetics, and that it threatened all the world's people. And his jaw dropped because he paid me just a few thousand dollars, a few thousand, because he, you know, I, I could have asked for 50 for one company. And I gave him 41 companies and I asked him for loyalty. And, you know, somehow he forgot to mention my name and the reports you gave to the military that, that mobilized the military. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, did, he mention, didn't mention all the sighting where everything came from. But he was he was he thought this is going to change the world. It's the most amazing thing he's ever seen. Actually flew down and even met me. We'll put that aside. So then I wait and wait. I'm like, OK, I think China's figured out. Trump's got him by the tail, and he, he's cutting off their legs. So they know it's not just about a trade war. So then I then I published um, AI Trump China and the Weaponization of Robotics of 5G. This is like a 10,000-page um, book compressed into maybe 160 pages. You need a quantum machine to figure out what it actually means, the inner meanings. But... The cover itself actually covers the virus that's happening today, all the things that are happening, even the digital ID, all the stuff with Bill, Bill Gates and everything, is, it's actually in the cover.
just the cover itself. And a lot of people were calling me stupid, uh, making fun of me on social media, everybody almost actually. So AI, Trump, China, and a weaponization of Vox 5G. So that is um, George Washington. It's actually a picture from, from the museum. When you go to Washington, um, D.C., you will see that image, and it's got George Washington's head. What I did was put President Trump's head. This is not only to depict the future, but also to inform him what he needs to do. Because the White House was behind, very behind. They weren't looking at these things in the way they should have, uh, because they're just going to know the incoming. So this represents the Constitution, and who leads it is President Trump. And... Um, this smartphone represents how people are connected on the 4G networks and they're being programmed. On the 5G networks, they will be biodigitally social programmed to accept cybernetics and robots. I, I, I just want to say that, uh, and I, I think you can hear me, but at any rate, uh, I want to have you explain uh, what you're talking about, bio, you know, you're, you're, you're putting bio with the AI. So when you describe bio AI, how would you describe it? So I describe it as bio digital social programming to the human biodigital network. And that's, it's very deep. So bio digital social programming, bio stands for your cells, your DNA, your blood, um, your, your bones, your skeleton, even the skin receptors and your hairs, everything that makes a physical body. Digital is a little different. Digital stands for your neural networks, your nervous system, your digital field, um, your digital image. As scientists just believe you have a digital image. Um, the atheists generally don't. And, and then if you have a faith, if you believe in God or, or religion, then it also stands for your, for your, um, your soul. Or your spirit or even your consciousness and social stands for your social media which includes twitter and facebook and so on and also your social network but also very very important it stands for your emotions because human beings are manipulated mostly through their emotions and programming is programming so bio digital social programming as it interconnects with machines and here are things, smartphones, robots, the ecosystem of the internet, and, and, and then how that can affect people through the human biovisual network, through biodigital fields, and biomatter, which is, is, is just, it would take me hours to describe each, each single one of these. All right, well, and um, how everyone, let, me, right. let me ask you this. Yes. Would you say uh, carbon, for example, we're carbon life forms and everything digital is uh, silicon, right? Correct? So we're, what you're, when you're emphasizing bio, you're really emphasizing the carbon life form. Is that correct? You could say that. And the digital is anything that's, that, can, that can go through not only the molecular dimension, but it can transfer, go to quantum realms and even get to the atomic realms. Actually, and neutrinos okay, and then uh, that's very good uh, that you said that because I want to talk to you about Giordi Rose and the, his D-Wave machine and what you think about his claim that his, his D-Wave not only could read his mind, but it could also go 5D. Never heard of this gentleman or his You're theories, kidding. But, okay. Uh, and that's uh, because this, the military oh, no, are oh, using, oh. this is their most advanced uh, quantum, you know, basically AI, and it's called the D-Wave oh. machine. So here's the thing. Most people get their research from reading other people's stuff. I actually didn't read any books in the past 20 years other than one book. Um, I haven't even done any uh, research in anyone's works at all, not even one person. What I did was investigate these companies, and I used certain biometric tools that the Pentagon doesn't even have. And that's why I was able to find exactly what everyone has. So people will bring up this name and this name, I'm like, oh, okay, that's what it means. So the human body has enough um, power and ability to, to be able to reach the quantum realms. But what these scientists want to do is put machines in you and mix you with artificial intelligence to be able to do that because they don't know how to make the human body have that ability. That's to absolutely that. correct. So, uh, and actually, you know, in essence, the monks also know this. I, I don't know whether you got to that level of, of discussion with them, but I, I want to also ask you if you linked all your chakras and reached Samadhi. Do you know what I'm talking about with that? 
So, yeah, so yeah, that I do know. So in the second time I went back, I at some point I could connect and read millions of people's thoughts in matters of seconds. And even the thoughts of all animals, this was 2002, and I had this wish, um, like, it's hard to explain, but, you know, um, I reached certain levels, but then I started a different discipline in 2002. And by 2009, my brain can compute billions of um, things in, in under a second. When I would sit in, in full lotus and all these channels would open up and go into my pineal gland and everywhere else, it would be thousands of, of channels. So what Elon Musk wants to accomplish, I can do that myself um, to certain degrees. And so basically you could you can see what happens if one person does something in a chain of reaction to an entire planet and how it affects billions of things in literally one to two seconds. But right now I'm sitting with you, I can't do that. But it, it takes takes time and it, it can you have to be um, you have to open the channels. When you do your, your face changes, all it becomes rosy and co full of color, and even even because um, your even your bones can look a little different because you, you, when you're sitting, I'm looking at you, you're looking at me. We're made from molecules from what you see, but everything is an emotion. So you can actually alter the way you look a little bit as well, and. You can look younger, you can look a little older. Of course, you're limited by this dimension and you, you need sleep. So I've been working 20 hours a day, 21 hours a day at a very, very fast rate um, because I saw huge dangers to every person on the planet. And I don't have the power to, to save anybody. I'm not some, you know, how do you put it? Every human being can have my ability. We're just all made in the image of God. So, or God, or God, whatever you want to say, angels, whatever it may be. So, but... What I learned in China, it just took me to another step. And then I did something else, and then it took me a lot more steps. And if the more I say it, the more people will, will think you're nuts. But here's the thing. These, these, uh, these AI scientists, they're talking about the same thing. They want to they wanna ask artificial intelligence, are you God? That's what Elon Musk said, right? He wants to find out what the simulation is. So getting back to this book, why I did this, because I saw great dangers and I wanted to bring this attention. And and after I gave this uh, um, report to former CIA direct op, cover ops, and then when I did this book, I think within, well, people in the Department of Homeland Security that I know gave it to CIA officials, high ranking, and it went straight to the White House. And within two or three weeks, President Trump was sitting down with the Prime Minister of Australia, and he says, China friends all the world's citizens exactly what I was saying, and it was in my reports. And then he turns over and says, you do robotics too, right? And boom. But they just thought I meant robotics because they, they look at this and they didn't get the whole picture. So I'm trying to get media to pick me up, the world's in danger, China, big tech, blah, 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 and no one's listening. So then I wait and wait. Then I finally published this book, which already has the AI book, this AI Trump inside of it. Because most conservatives didn't really get it, and liberals were just hating on it. They absolutely were just attacking me with vileness. So, and I'm like, I did this for everybody. Okay, so I published this, Artificial Intelligence of Humanity. Prior to this, there were people in the media I took this to, and there were good people. They were stealing everything, going to the neocons in, um, in Washington and other media, and using my my stuff, but, but not telling it came from me. Just like, they saw my research, and then they'd go find open source and just say the same stuff in a different way. And I, I did this for altruism. So they really, really not damaged not only my report, but also the people who were behind me, people in the Secret Service uh, that were with the Secret Service for years, the FBI, um, Department of Homeland Security, universities. You know, not, not everything came from me. I, I had help on the way, okay? So they did that. And also wherever I, I tweeted and, uh, and whoever was looking at it, even generals that I met, they start using this stuff and got money from the think tanks They're from East Coast and West Coast. So I don't even have time to try to get money and try to do any contracts because I, I see there's so much danger that coming to every single person on the planet. So I'm trying my best. Please, media, pick me up. Nobody picks me up. So I publish Artificial Intelligence Danger to Humanity, and this has 50 of the most important companies I put in there and how they threaten all the world's citizens, and it's got the AI book in there. And I put in there how I warned the White House uh, about plots to take out President Trump. 
uh, with microbiotic terrorism, which includes this virus, and Vice President Pence, and conservative leaders to shift, and it was coming from China. So um, anyway, uh, people thought I was a little off. So as soon as I published this, with the, uh, people that I knew that are Chinese, a lot of them, took a lot of my information and even got to the AI department um, in China, uh, of Trump. They didn't know it was coming from me. And then they're like, oh, yeah, CCC bad, AI bad. And then they made an announcement. China threatens all the world's people with AI, robotics, bioengineering, da 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 So, but almost all of it came from me. Um, so, but I put it aside and I was working um, really, really hard. I'm like, okay, what do I do? The world's in danger. No media will take me up. Content creators are stealing my stuff or just avoiding me. Even so-called patriots that have huge Twitter accounts, I'm asking, please help. They won't. So I have um, and uh, Okay, so, but I have to say that the reason they might not have helped you is uh, possibly because they're either afraid or they've been told not to, or they also don't understand. Uh, so there's, there's that. And they're very suspicious, right? So everyone's suspicious of everyone. And my witness, uh, Mark Richards, said that at this time, generals are actually suspicious of other generals and the information coming in because they can't trust where it's coming from. Because there are, he says, six alien AIs in, invading our Earth at this time. And he said that actually about six months ago or more. And so there might even be more than that now. And on top of it, I have another witness that says we have nine human derived, you know, uh, basically reverse engineered, probably from alien tech, but whatever, human AI, nine of them uh, versions. So are you aware of that? And I mean, you're operating on a very high level. I can see that already. And there's a lot of government remote viewers, for example, who would also tap into that. And I don't know if you're in touch with them. So I know I, I put a, a lot into that quest, those questions. But if you can sort of talk about, you know, the fact that we've got competing AIs out there. So it's not just all one AI, but they all they're, they're trying to make it a one world AI. But can you talk about that? Because I know we're jumping ahead, but um, my audience and and I are uh, a quite, you know, I talk to my audience all the time about AI. So, you know, I, it's always in my work. Obviously, I don't have your depth of understanding, but so it'd be great to hear more from you about what you think about all what I just said. Yeah. So the reason why I did the lawsuit is because nobody would help and, and I'm trying to help everybody. And so I had the lawsuit to bring mass awareness to everybody. And I wanted to serve these guys to bring mass awareness to them because they're, they're off, all those people on the list. And it also broke a digital field um, that, that's surrounding so many things with competing AIs that are moving in such a fast way as imperceptible to the human brain for mo almost everybody on the planet. And this includes a Pentagon because the Pentagon is using technology to concert machines. That being said, the people, the human beings behind these machines are generally using three or four or five percent of the brain power. Um, they go home, they have emotions, they drink, they don't have these channels open, so they can't even perceive things. They can only go by their machines. So um, I don't want to I get into this in part two if you want to have me on, because this is gonna really deep and I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna cause alarms with certain things. So but I have something coming out, like a disclosure coming out in two days. It's it's going to explain certain things. But so I sued um, Facebook, Neuralink, Google, Alphabet, Elon Musk. I sued um, Sergey Brin, Larry Page, and also PR Newswire for and for taking away my press releases that was trying to say the world's in danger, the press is in danger from China and big tech. And reason why I did these wasn't. Not, not just to expose them, to expose them to themselves because they don't realize what they're doing. They're just like little ant guys fulfilling something. So again, nobody would, and a lot of people actually support that lawsuit. Every person on the internet almost took bits of it and retweeted it and nobody knew it came from me. I have 500 followers. I'm asking for donations. Please give me donations so I can um, service these guys and I have 29 John Doe's two or three months nobody's helping me and I'm begging people one person just retweeted it for me because I, I chose that person because I knew they'll be able to accept certain things 
but nobody gets what I'm doing. Well, we don't care about China. We, we care about censorship. I'm like this, this involves everything. You don't get it. You don't get it. So I'm trying to get on shows, nobody gets me on. And then one person helps me after I kind of make him understand after a couple months and gets me on a couple of shows. And then that that gets me on a couple other shows, which was John B. Wells, and and I talked about the prophecy that I saw in in, in his show, and uh, Red Pill seventy eight got me in his show, and um, there was a few other people. Then I got on SGT before it, and then X X twenty two. So, in Red Pill, I, I I talked about certain things that were metaphysical because it was really appropriate for his platform. Uh, but when you talk about certain other things in other platforms, they won't accept it. So you have to you have to try to make people understand to what they can understand and accept. Okay, okay, but what uh, what what purpose is your lawsuit going to serve? In other words, is it is it going to go to a court? Do you think? I mean, it, it did go to a court. So then I released a name, which includes Obama, Clinton, Biden. So it was th- it was three levels. So there was a spiritual plane or the AI plane that you talk about, right? But the, at the first plane, it brings exposure. That, whoa, all these things are dangerous for you. And you see, it ties in everything. It's 87 pages and everything you're dealing with past, present, and it's emerging in the future. And the lockdown is in the freaking lawsuit and in my books. So then the second t- uh, thing is, whoa, these guys did these things and these are the penal code. And this is how it's connected to this law and city, state, national, international levels. What did they do to us? What? They're programming us through AI coding, AI algorithms, and manipulating us while we're on Twitter and Facebook and and, and Google and the media, and it's completely rehardwiring our brains, and we don't even know it, and it's through proximity sensors as we're engaging with these smartphones and the AI systems, and when we go on 5G system, we're going to lose our free will. What does that? What does this mean? Oh, well, it leads to human trafficking and sex trafficking. They're reading this 87-page lawsuit, and they go to my book, and the, and the articles and the videos, Then oh, it's very, kind of clear. And then they look at what's happening around the world, the lockdown, the virus. Whoa, all this makes sense. How the hell do they know all these things? But that was the level two because it puts these people in check when they see, whoa, we're, we're being sued and we're being exposed. So Bill, um, uh, Microsoft, Bill, I forget his name, uh, Bill, what's his last name, the gentleman? I always forget his last name. Yes. Okay. Uh, he, he stepped down within two weeks of me naming him, right? But I'm asking for donations to serve them before lockdown because I know the lockdown is coming. And nobody's giving me donations. I ran out of my money. I ran out of every cent. And when I sued Google the first time, every, almost every person I knew scared off, backed away. And there were so many competing AIs coming after me and because they knew what I was trying to do. So uh, that's all I said. That's all, that's all I'm going to say for now. So long story short, um, lockdown happens and then I get on X22 and now it's too late to serve these guys. But they're not the enemies. There's something else. It's an invisible enemy. Okay. And, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Right, right there. Uh, so there is an invisible enemy. En- uh, enemy. I, I want to hear uh, more about that invisible enemy. So you think it goes, I mean, obviously, you know, I go into uh, areas have to do with the aliens and so on. Um, are you talking about that? Or are you talking about something else? I'm talking about something that I want to disclose maybe in 48 right. hours. Uh, it's something, it's something d- different, very, very deep. And um, it's, it's something is maybe hard to um, describe in, in, in this, but there's so many planes of this. It's not just the spiritual dimension. Why are we sitting in our homes? Why were we complicit to 20 years of fallen off a practitioner? Well, I want to ask Christian? you that. Now, I, I, I want to bring this down to the CV. Um, I use the abbreviation <clears throat> because of censorship. So you know what I'm talking about when I say CV-19, for example. So what I'm asking is, you knew about the lockdown before it happened. Did you see this situation that we're in right now? In other words, you say you see a lot of the future, but I'm wondering, did you see this exact situation with the virus and 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 sort of the way it started? And do you know that it's a bioweapon? Do you consider it a bioweapon or do you consider it part of uh, this AI? In other words, is there an AI component uh, to the virus or so-called virus? 
Well, in my book, I, I, I put that there is a virus that's engineered by artificial intelligence before it happens. Right. And, and I, I have heard that. Uh, so you believe that that's the case in this case, right? Well, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have uh, printed it in August and then reprinted it in, in October if I didn't know what it was and what's coming. And so there's, there's other components to it, too. So we're really at fault for this. Um, humanity is never protected when it loses righteousness and it, it, it loses the standard of being humanity. So it's, uh, if you look at every civilization that we've had that's been destroyed, according to the ancient writings of the Sumerians, the Persians, the Vestans, the Indians, the um, Bhagavad Gita, um, the, the American Indians, the, the oral language, and the Chinese and the Japanese and the Greeks and the Christians and the book of Genesis and so on and so on and so on. All of them talk about a time where, you know, there was some type of Star Wars, but there also there was a, a time that um, people's morals went down. And they talk about, you know, all kinds of sexual orgies and pedophilia and killing and eating, uh, eating can cannibalism, all kinds of different things. If you look at our society, Hollywood has been doing that. And Hollywood got introverted in the 1940s and it got into people's brains and the new generation has got that. And this got into our every agency that we have. I don't just mean intelligence agency, but the people's values were changed from Cinderella, as I put in my other interviews, or um, Gone with the Wind type of people to what we have today. And people have been hurt. The human race has been hurt. They, they've, been, um, they've been hurt really bad. Every person, they don't, they don't understand. They've been hurt really really bad it's, it's really really complex yet it's simple so what we need to do at the moment is really repent and look inside why were we complicit in all these camps in china for 20 years why did we do business with the chinese government for 20 years and then if we've hurt other people like our, our loved ones our, our spouses and if we've cheated people if we've stolen things and um you know if we've slandered other people if we're negative we should just repent why because this creates a chain of reaction um, to entire world. Whoever has negative negative things that they do to other people, it just cycles. But because we have 7 billion people and it's connecting to artificial intelligence on the 5G networks, mobilizing machines, drones, robotics, bioengineering, cybernetics, this negativity will alter humanity and extinct everybody in stages. So Elon Musk wants to put a chip in your head. And to tap into things that, that I tapped in for 20 years, and he still won't be able to get to what I, what I got. And he wants to cheat the system. He wants to download things to your brain. And you just be a vegetable sitting like this and, you know, connecting to all, augmented reality and virtual reality and mixed reality. You know, I can build his AGI for him like that. It, it would take me maybe... You know, just give me the machines and I can tell you what to do and I can build you an AGI really, really fast. And then they could, that could lead to artificial intelligence, but I would never do that. And, I, you know, some of the things I can't even do, I can't even change my entire, I have to look at it on YouTube. But other things when it comes to neural networks, nervous systems, and augmented reality, mixed reality, and um, alternate reality, the things that they're working with and they don't really understand 100% themselves, people would think like Elon Musk is really smart. And, and Google is really Google guys are really smart, and he, even Einstein, but they're not wise. Um, Einstein was actually kind of wise, but when it comes to Elon Musk and these Google CEOs and Bill Gates, they're really stupid, dumb as a rock. Why? Why would you? I'm sorry. Why would you do business with China and you put your stuff in China? First of all, you're 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 helping people. Um, uh, committing atrocities by giving you surveillance systems, facial recognition, voice recognition. Okay, now um, there's no doubt about that. Uh, so let me right. talk to you a little bit about Huawei and why the British held on to their tech, their Huawei tech. In other words, the United States was smart enough, or at least our, our regime, uh, the Trump regime, was smart enough to block Huawei from our country. Uh, but they still allowed it in Britain. And uh, you, miss, you know that... Uh, Basically, uh, the NSA and the uh, you know the it's it's complementary or agency in uh, in in Britain are are linked. All right, right? they're totally linked, and uh, so Huawei has probably infiltrated our 
networks like our intelligence net networks, et cetera. Now, are you warning them about that? Because uh, now just recently, I think, uh, now Britain is, is backing away from Huawei, even, you know, they didn't even want to get rid of their equipment, which is really stupid. So I, I mean, I'm totally on board with you on that, on that, but this is how the, the AI is, was going to get into our country, but it appears that it came in through, uh, through, you know, it's not Men With Hill, it's, uh, you know what I'm talking about, uh, you know, GCHQ. So GCHQ and NSA are completely linked. Are you aware of that? Uh, so let me backtrack to the beginning of your first question. So, because it's, it's interconnected, why, what happened with, 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 um, with the UK. So I come out with all these reports, right? And then I come with a concept of a quantum digital AI brain that connects to the 5G networks, that connects to Huawei, that mobilizes drones, machine, robotics, spatial recognition, voice recognition, nanobots, all these uh, microbots that could rule the whole world. And I'm sending all these articles as well. Even I'm, tw I'm tweeting to President Trump, I'm tweeting to, um, to Secretary of State, uh, every every major person that's connected to him, they know. And they never they never put all this stuff together, and they're and they're having their the Pentagon look at it, the CIA is looking at it, and they're like, okay, okay, can they really do this? And then the the stuff I get to the CIA and Secret Service before that, well, the the former director of CIA cover-ups. So all that information is ready and available, and we have a constitution, and President Trump is really really on it, right? But when it comes to um, the UK and um, Boris. You know, he was fighting for power and try to get his solidified his, his power, and, and he, he kind of couldn't. There's Brexit involved, and and there was interconnection with all these countries. And so, although we had deals with China, Trump was able to break that apart. But there were so many financial ties that are worth billions and trillions in the future that were linked to Huawei, because Huawei through China and an interconnection of multiple different companies like Face Plus Plus and Samsung Time and Tencent and, uh, and so many different iCarbon X and so many different Chinese companies, they had embedded themselves to every European nation and linked it to um, the UK and France. So President Trump is having his people fly down and they're meeting and talking privately or saying, hey, get rid of Huawei. And they're like, mm, okay, fine. They come down and make it narrow. But they don't get the, the, the – they're not sophisticated in the government of the UK to understand these concepts. So right before the lockdown, I'm, I'm giving somebody who, who talks to him. Um, and I'm giving that message. I'm like, you need to show him these articles and these videos I've done about Google and Huawei and my book and get him to completely cut it off. He does it. But as soon as the virus hits him and starts choking him, then he has a different thought. Okay, I need to get rid of Huawei. <laughs> so um, it's it's the greed. I don't mean he's greedy, but there there was interconnection of pressure on Boris that he couldn't do it. He couldn't win. But President Trump, no matter how much pressure pressure that came on this guy, like I put in my first book that he had a digital field. No matter how much pressure it came on him from the rogue entities and our intelligence community hunting him, the media being mobilized to hunt him, um, just the average citizen being mobilized to hunt our president and our constitution, he was able to withstand all these bullets and all these arrows. And because not only because there was, there was something protecting him, but the guy has a strong will. I mean, he was destined to be where he is, and that's why I put him the way I did. So. But that's all interconnected because we have people in the NSA and the CIA and Secret Service and the FBI. Um, a lot of them are hardworking. Some of them understand these things in a really good way, but not all the way. Some understand a little bit. But a lot of them are new generation people. They go to schools and they get that 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 teaching from their school and they go into intelligence communities. And they can only understand what they've been taught and what they can believe. And a lot of their thinking has been in line with um, our, our media like CNN and, and MSNBC and, and different things. So they're not going to have the ability to be able to, to, to counter these things. So fortunately, President Trump at the moment has good military around him and, and fairly good advisors, but AI, they've been really, really behind and the 5G system. So as I said in my videos, my books, in the articles, 5G is made for machines, not for human beings. It is not good for you. It's not healthy for you. So 
I put out articles and videos about the COVID-19, but it wasn't causing this virus. And even the interviews I had two over two months ago, what I said is that because these frequencies and the radiation are so powerful and the millimeter waves and then so many towers are close by that when it hits your nervous system and your electrical field and your skin receptors, it actually alters um, and morphs your cells. It weakens your immune system and hurts your DNA. As soon as it happens, if you have a flu, it can become really bad. If you had a vaccine even 30 years ago, that will start replicating inside of you and become stronger if you have 20 vaccines, even more. So when you have this virus, and I put in, in early February, that's a mutating virus that, that, that replicates. That means it's a bioengineered replicating mutating virus reinforced by 5G frequency. So basically 5G is made for machines. It's a military weapon. So when these are around your family and you've been exposed to this and you're not showing positive, your immune system will go down and it can replicate. You, 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 can, you can actually get the virus or test positive and die a lot quicker. Albeit our 5G system is safer, not safe, healthier, not healthy, than China's crap, the Huawei they had. And th that's why a lot of people died faster. But the virus is deadly, don't get me wrong. It's not just a normal virus that you get the flu. It's pretty damn strong. Uh, it affects other people differently. It affects white people versus Asians, versus blacks, and the Middle Easterners. So Italians and Middle Easterners, they have uh, a lot of Mongolian blood and Arab blood in them. Um, so it affects them differently and the Chinese differently because most of them are just Han or a mix of Mongolian Han or Manchurian or, or Yin or so many different uh, ethnicities they have. So, but again, it's still deadly for every race. It's regardless of what you are. Um, so, But that cleats sense, if you look at the empty hospitals and you look at the, uh, you know, also we have a very important doctor. Uh, his name is Cameron Kyle Sedell. And he, he came forward saying, you know, he works in critical care in New York City, and he was coming across people that really had, uh, you know, elevation sickness. They, they didn't have, uh, they didn't need ventilators. Ventilators made it worse. And so the bottom line is there's something else going on here, which is not a normal so-called virus, which if you look at Robert Young's work, you maybe don't know him, Dr. Robert Young and, and others, uh, Dr. Cowan, for example. Now I'm getting a whole list of them who realized that Louis Pasteur even said that his ger so-called germ theory was wrong toward the end of his life. And so in, in essence, <clears throat> we don't really have viruses per se. We have a reaction within our body that, ex you know, expels poison, a poison, acidic poison in response to something unhealthy and also in inside our bodies as well as outside our bodies. So the trouble is that this bioweapon has to have, I believe, an AI component that is, is actually triggering, you know, some people to die. But most people Actually, I don't think they're even dying. And the intention was to have a lot more people die, and it's not working. So what do you say to that? Yeah, the intention was to have a lot of people to die. A lot of people to die. And I can't tell you on this interview what's – there's so many things that are really hard to believe that how people are being protected in other ways. But – it is a virus, don't get me wrong. Just because some hospitals are, are empty, it doesn't mean other people are not really sick. Some people get really, really sick with this virus and die. So um, it is a combination of things. It's not just, uh, it's a real virus. D don't think it's not a real virus. So I'm not saying everyone should be sitting in their homes, but I'm also not saying everybody should be outside their homes and, and uh, not social distancing. There's a, co there's a combination of the two at the beginning because it really is um, – it's really um, – it's, it's a virus semi-plague, but it doesn't mean it's going to kill every person. It doesn't mean every person will actually be sick from it. Some people will, will die from it, and some people will get really sick from it. But th there's other components to it. Um, so – if you have everyone sitting in their homes and they get restless, then there are going to be riots in the streets. And cops come in, there could be shootings. There could be a civil war. 
it'd be so many different things. It's just so many different planes that we could talk about in, in, in this talk. And I don't want to get too All right. deep. Well, because I mean, then- you have to understand that I've done a lot of broadcasts, uh, you know, where I'm, I'm talking about all this. And I can see that uh, this is organ- organized. This was planned in advance. Yes. So they wanted people yes. to separate. They wanted people to sit in their homes. But it's not, yes. I don't believe it's because of the virus. The virus is not contagious. It's not even a virus, but you'd have to get into, you know, immunology and vi- virology and all of that. And we don't have time for that right now. So, but I understand that you seem to perceive that there are other levels to this so-called, so-called virus. And I understand that some people are getting sick and dying, but they're also almost without exception, they have what you call underlying causes that are already aggravated. uh, And then there's the link up to 5G, which seems to escalate everything, as you said, you you said just earlier. So anything you have wrong with you, it, it basically can trigger, especially if you've been vaccinated. And it does, they have been tracking that and finding that a lot of people getting sick from the virus have had vaccines for the so-called flu, et cetera, whatever kind of vaccine they had in the past. So that makes sense. It, it's now triggering that vaccine to replicate, et cetera. But there's something else going on completely uh, here. I don't, I don't want to get into that. All right. And I do want me. my audience to understand that I, in advance, we talked how, that how, was how, something, how, some how, things you how, can answer and some things you can't, some things have a matter of timing. And we also want yeah. to make sure you that stay question, safe. That question you want to ask, please don't All ask right. that at the moment. Just, just wait, just wait a few days right. because then you'll, you'll, you may cause some havoc by doing that and by even posing that kind of question. And even get an answer from me. You actually will cause um, havoc. So I recommend you don't ask that question. Um, but for now, but it's not just that, okay? People, it's all it's a real virus as well. It's it's all interconnected things. It's an engineered virus that actually spreads. But a lot of people who have died, they died because they had a heart attack as well, or they were sick from something else. So if you have a flu and any kind of virus flu and you you're gonna die anyway so and then so so if you if you died from your bone broke and I'll say COVID yeah that component exists so maybe 30,000 people died from COVID in the US but maybe it was only 10,000 that actually died from COVID and it was it was underlying stuff for 20,000 it was but but let me put this straight for China a lot of millions of people died in China. I put an article that why are 21 million phones missing? It was a combination of people dying from the virus, 5G system reinforcing the, those things as well, but also the military killing you because they thought you had the virus and it's contagious and throwing you in crematoriums even while you're half alive. I don't all know right, all these now, things. Are you aware that of, of what was called the Chinese party whistleblower who came out and they yeah. wiped his testimony off the internet, but I actually saved a copy uh, and it's on my website. Are you aware of that Chinese party whistleblower, his testimony saying there were actually two viruses and one was a cover for the other in China? It's a mul- multiple viruses and it's mutating viruses. That means when it mutates, you not only have one virus, you have multiple viruses everywhere around the world. And so when you have a plague hit humanity, it becomes multiple different things and it moves from humans to animals to objects from whatever you touch. That being said, um, I, a wise person taught me something and I, I concur 100% with this. For every illness, 30% is real illness and 70% is your mind. So if you're afraid of it, it'll kill you. So one of, you shouldn't be, you should be cautious of any virus, especially this one, but you shouldn't be afraid. You know, wash your hands, social distance a little bit short, but do not be afraid. Don't be afraid of this or other stuff that's going to be seen to you in the near future as well. And here's the thing. If we, if we have a righteous field and a righteous mind and we elevate ourselves, not only just prayer is not going to work. You know, people who are like, who actually pray a lot, uh, Christians and Catholics, and all if you read your book, it says repent first, then prayer. In the, in the history, a lot of people start praying and they get killed. Why? Because 
deep down inside, they didn't repent, they didn't change their heart. So we really should repent because why? Found off a Christian Tibetan Uyghur, 20 years, put in camps, killed. No one talks about it. No one says, oh, we helped that. We should repent for that, but repent for if you hurt anybody. This is very, very serious because I didn't come out. I could have just sat home and kept them drinking my tea and and or make contracts and made money and not invest everything I had and work almost 20 hours a day. And you know, when I ran that Google lawsuit, um, I'll tell you in my next interview, but it, it was a lot of pressure on me and and it just wasn't about a lawsuit. It, 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 it's just huge. And then releasing the, um, it's not like President Trump doesn't know. It's not like they don't know. It's not the whole, all the world leaders they don't know and they didn't read all those things. It, you know, it was mind blowing for a lot of people, but it it shows everything that's happening today. But so if you see that I, that I was writing all these things, please believe me in this. Don't be afraid. And truly repent and we should, we including myself we need to improve ourselves ourselves become better people to be kinder um to be more forbearant and and and, and righteous and have a stronger will because we are made in the image of a higher power we are made to be noble people we're made we are special people very very special people every human every person on the planet almost every person 99 percent of them Maybe all this say all, all human beings on the planet, they're very, very special and they have a special origin. And th in the future, um, things will be revealed and there will be a glorious civilization for humanity. But in the interim, it's a little bit dangerous. Um, for, and we should all support each other and be kind. And, and yeah, so okay. even now, after, okay. yeah, so he, let me give you an example. So there are big leaders that have Twitter accounts. I warned them about the virus, so they stopped saying it's not it's a hoax because it wasn't a hoax, and they could have got their Twitter accounts, um, um, you know, taken off. I was trying to help them. They didn't listen, and then, then they listened. But then when I asked him retweet my stuff, hey, people programmed to attack Trump, the video article, they won't do it. Please uh, tweet retweet the lawsuit. It's going to prevent this law the lockdown to be what it is. It's going to change it. They won't do it. And even today, when they see I'm right, now they're actually taking robot little images and, and videos and, oh, yeah, people are programmed. And they're doing that. So it's like if the left is so bad, and I, I pointed out the left, why are conservatives doing that and, 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 and stopping the person that's trying to bring so much stuff that he has, still hasn't disclosed and, and, has, and has seen everything that was on mark? And you're still like plagiarizing or stealing, you want support. Why? Well, that means that person is getting some kind of order from above or the, the components of a person's jealousy and ego and pride and wanting fame gets controlled by the AI system. That's what I put it. Humanity is being controlled like mice on the AI grid and they don't see it. It's entire play from Pelosi going after Trump and shift. It was all a design. It was all destined. It was a cause and effect. And they're all being controlled. Pelosi is actually being controlled to go after President Trump. No matter if you look at her facial recognition or voice recognition, and you look into scan inside her brain and the neural networks. The actual design of her brain is just like it's like an attack cat or dog to go after Trump. No matter what he says, no matter what he's right about, even if if it, the stake of half the population on the planet has to do, that person is programmed that way. They say, okay, let's remove uh, Trump. I'm oh, no, sorry, let's remove um, Pelosi. Let's remove um, uh, uh, Bill Gates. Let's remove uh, Elon Musk. Whoever gets in that position will be corrupted like that because that's been the nature of humanity. Even if it's conservative, they'll say, oh, these guys are bad. They're horrible. They're the cabal, which is they're still right. They are the cabal. But as soon as they get in those positions, they're doing the same stuff. They're doing yes. it to me. Yes. You have to see yes. So I it's agree like, completely. So that's the, fault. the human race is at fault. We wouldn't be where we are today if we were good, honest people that don't slander and say negative things and, and, and try to sabotage okay. um, other people. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. But so, at this point, you know, I, I want I want to get into your book, actually, because we're not really dealing with the topics that you are an expert in. And so what I'd like to do is, and I don't know why I have this weird echo in my head, but uh, you, you're not listening to the show in the background on another computer or anything. You don't have it running, do you? Oh, okay. Uh, so, okay. I've got, I've got your 
the index from the first book and and the list of stuff there and it's it's so there's so much there that I want to run down it quickly and have you sort of give short explanations so that people understand what your book is dealing with okay so I'm I'm going to show that the White House to be able not to buy it from Amazon, but they can look at all the subtext so they can figure the general picture out, but not everything. And I have people in the Secret Service been the 40 years uh, of Secret Service FBI look at it, and they're a special task where like, this is really, I mean, it's mind blowing, but they couldn't figure some of these out. So that's why you need to read this book because um, this AI Trump, the one we're gonna, we're gonna read about, it's inside of artificial intelligence humanity. Read that because it, it, it actually discloses the company in a step process, then, it, then it's got this book inside of it, then it goes to the end. So, um, but sure, because this book cover has um, the main things, but it doesn't have my report, what I gave to the White House, how I did it, and what I, you know, go ahead. So go ahead, ask, ask your questions. a general idea about what's going on here. And uh, so so I'm just gonna flip through a couple pages. So you've got the microbiotic terrorism, assassination and espionage using uh, biometric software, insect drones, dragonflies, uh, mosquito drones, robo bees, cyborg beetles, uh, bat bots, and even uh, octopus robotics, right? Then you talk about smart cities, and then you get into uh, the China. I mean, it really, the way you you write about this is China is going absolutely crazy, but they're also bouncing off the West. So our own government is very involved in all this research, apparently, right? <laughs> okay. Yes. And so then you're talking about, you know, we know about China's theft because, and it's interesting how focused they are in stealing from us. I'm not so sure that we are so focused on stealing from them as they are stealing from us. What is that dynamic? Is it because they are so into a hive mind that they just don't have the creativity to come up as easily with a, a different approach? Uh, it's because of communism. Communism makes everyone's thoughts uniform. It doesn't give them freedom, and it makes them uh, makes the people of China um, almost vile. Uh, you know, I've lived there a year. I have fifteen hundred friends, Chinese numbers in here, uh, who I have experience with for twenty years, and they always tell me, you know, we're really good at lying. We're professional liars, and I know they're lying. I mean, the facial recognition will look at you, and you do the thing of telling you the truth, and they'll do things that ten years down the line that can affect things. And that comes not from communism. It actually comes from their history of dynasties, Sun Tzu art of war, Confucianism, and introvertedness. Uh, but the Chinese communist regime ruined the family ethics, ruined Buddhism, Taoism, Christianity, Confucianism, all these different uh, moral ethic principles that were in their society that gave them, hey, don't cheat people, be honest. It was gone out the window. So with communism and 1.5 billion people that not enough goods or food and, and they're fighting for jobs and power, well, they become corrupt. So there we're really good at coming to the U.S. and say, how, how are you doing and making friends, stealing everything for IP theft, collaboration, studying under professors, uh, making friends of professors who, who got them to give information to China or other countries that got into China um, and also through uh, tech mergers but also force tech transfer. Force to transfer is this, you go to China, hey, I wanna do business here, it's great. There's a sign here, here's $10 million. Oh yeah, I'm happy. But you gotta give us your, uh, uh, your, your goods. What do you mean by that? Well, we wanna know how you built the software and this hardware and, and the, the patent knowledge is still yours. You own it, but we, we need to have it for, for our safety because it's a national security, some, some BS like that. But they'll have you sign it so that they know how to duplicate it. While they're using your company, you don't know, but the Chinese government and other corporations had just built 20 companies around that company with the same thing in China. So you then you have millions of AI researchers and biotech uh, companies working and building the same stuff. And these guys are mixing people with animals and, and chimeras and monkeys, stem cells, all kinds of things. They don't, they don't have any moral ethics. And they're, they're trying to build clones, all kind of stuff, which we had in, in Europe, and, and there are secret places in South America, and even 
I wouldn't say America anymore, but they're working on it. There's there's robots and machinery, and of course, a military. You know, I've never looked in our military because that's I'm a, I'm a U.S. citizen, and I I don't want to look into what they have, and but I already know what they have because I know where it comes from, and and you know our country is protected over any other country. We have the most powerful military on the planet. There are things that we have that are not uh, not known. But there are certain things that we have that was stolen by China that are, that makes China a little bit very powerful. So we ask what China needs to be exposed and taken out non materially very, very soon before they reach artificial general or super intelligence. When they do that, they can take out everybody. And if our country reaches artificial super intelligence, ourselves will be taken out because it'll be beyond the comprehension of any human being on the planet. And nobody will be control. The Pentagon will not be able to control it. So the best thing to do at the moment is to expose the Chinese communist regime and get the whole world to point at them and say, hey, you guys are pretty sinister. You cause this disease and you've been killing people with organs. And the other things that we want to talk about later, that's going to be solved in a different way. There's, there's two planes of this. Um, so All right. So it, uh, ultimately, uh, uh, we're, uh, we, we, we look like we're going to have to deal with war with China. Uh, in the future. And that's that's been prophesied. And we've got whistleblowers who've talked about that as well. Um, now, I'm going to continue um, through your book really quickly. And, and just if there's anything that we, you want to stop and talk about, just tell me. Um, so I just want people to be aware that what it contains. Uh, so I'm just showing people these pages of what is in essence, the inside of your book, uh, it, the, um, the table of contents. All right. So you've got China and Iran. Now, one of the things is the war with Iran. So they were, they were trying to have a war with Iran for a long time. Uh, it never really got off the ground all that well. Uh, and then, but the bottom line is they were really trying to get to China through Iran. So I don't yes. know if the tactic has changed and they decided to go directly at China because this virus is also focusing all the people's uh, attention on China, right? So it, it provides a service yes. in that sense. Positive. Okay. And uh, and so that's what we're dealing with here. And so I just want to say that's in your book, organ trafficking. For some reason, that's a really strange area uh, to, to have such a focus on. And I, I just wonder, is there any uh, detail about organ trafficking? I know you talk about clones as well. What is it about organs uh, that the Chinese are so focused on collecting? There's multiple levels of it currently for the future and needed for other things, but they're also trying to build organs as well. But, um, you know, a lot of the Chinese are unhealthy and uh, they wouldn't donate. Like in, in, the, in the late 90s and early 2000s, 3,000 donations a year in a population of over a billion people. They were superstitious, so they wouldn't want to donate. So they start, uh, the first they went in 1987, they, had, they passed a law and they said, if you, if you have a political prisoner, you're, it's a property of the state, you can kill him with organs. So they went after Uyghurs because Uyghurs were not Chinese or a mix. They're a Turk tribe, which is a mix of Persian, Arab, Chinese, and maybe a little bit of something else. So then they went after um, Tibetans because Tibetans weren't racially Chinese and they were killing them with organs. Then they went after Christians, which were generally Chinese. And then in 1999, the Falun Dafa came, um, was persecuted because that grew to 100 million people. And they and they uh, approached the founder, Mr. Mr. Yong and said, hey, you have this practice. It's increasing people's immunity. They're becoming healthier. Three principles, Jen Shan Ren, truth, compassion, and forbearance. Why don't we create a membership on the Communist Party and charge money? And then Mr. Li Hongzhu says, well, no. Um, this is for the people. I don't watch people. I don't follow them. I don't know how many members. I, don't, I can't charge money. They got scared. They banned it. They slanted the practice. Put people in, in camps. They wouldn't say who their parents were. But then they realized these people have really, really like good organs because they don't smoke, drink, do drugs, and they're doing qigong and on these 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 exercises um, that were similar to maybe like what you would say the uh, the kundalini or or maybe Christ consciousness. But they were really healthy because it's also like yoga. So. 2006, David Kilgore and David Maness, former Canadian Secretary of State and, and Nobel nominee, High Benign Council David, David Maness, they concluded that 41,000 transplants were unaccounted for and he had 3,000 donations. And they can all, that's only what they count. 2016, they do an update and they're like, well, no, 
there's 60 to 100,000 transplants that's missing every year per year since 2001, 15 years straight. That's like half, one and a half million transplants. The whole world was flying in and China had like on their websites, hey, um, fly in, 40 hour wait time, we'll give you a heart, liver, kidney, $150,000 cash. People were flying in from America, from Canada, from Europe, Israel, Africa, India, the entire world, even Japan. And they're getting organs on standby. And when it didn't work, they had a backup, second and third organ. How do you do that unless you have people locked up in camps or in the hospital somewhere? And then par the military is helping you. The police is helping you. They're quarantining you and they're killing you for the organs. So even corneas, they, were getting, so they would have uh, one person, when they kill, they had a bunch of people on standby because each part of the body will go a different person. They can make over a million dollars on one person alone, even more than that. So... There, the White House passed a resolution. Um, I'm sorry, the uh, Congress in in 2000, I think 16 or 17, uh, resolution 343, condemning the persecution of the Falun Dafa and all other minority groups and Christians, and um, organ harvesting, live organ harvesting. So their work and other people's work led into this, and I I, I housed them twice uh, during my doctoral and my homeland security masters um, as well, and. You know, local news networks, when they reported uh, these conferences they put, they would pull them next day because China will call. So China, basically, through getting surveillance technology from Google and these big tech companies, were able to hunt people and locate them. Then they used um, biotech companies and uh, big pharma and, and, and even our doctors to get training and the needed goods to be able to farm these people and kill them for their organs. That's step two. Step three was the World Bank gave them money, our businesses gave them money, we bought Made in China goods, three. So you have people contributing from buying Made in China goods to people being slaughtered for their organs, massive. Incredible. You have companies. Incredible. You have companies um, in, uh, doing business, and a lot of companies knew this was going on. President Obama knew this was going on. He was giving hand-delivered papers. He was he was giving briefs by the CIA. He was giving briefs um, when he came into the White House, and George Bush knew about this. I didn't put him in a lawsuit because, you know, he got incoming from Iraq, and he couldn't do it. He, he would have done something about it. But he got income from Iraq. But Obama, you know, he let us do business with China. So, and President Trump was trying to cut that. He was trying to expose these guys for what they are. And first of all, he had to pull the money. That's why I said the trade war was never about trade war in my books. He He's smart. If he goes, hey, you guys are organ harvesting people. You have millions in camps as well, or tens of millions. You know, he's getting all this income from the left. China, China will do something that crashed our economy and we'll be sitting in our homes. And then he'll, he'll not only lose the presidency, but then the whole country will collapse and everybody would like be ruled by China because the people like Obama and Clinton and Biden, they're dumb. Uh, I'm sorry, they're really, really dumb. And I'm policy, they're really stupid people. So they don't see these things. And they endanger everybody, including Schiff, the, the skinny neck guy. I, I'm being rude on your on your on your um, on your show, but uh, I've never been this rude ever before, and I, and I, I think I should because, you know, these are the type of people that kind of ruin the world. So President Trump has been trying to do a really good job, and he's done a good job. But look what happened to him, and even now, if if he's he got bogged down, China did this to us. But it's also we did it. It's our doing business. So it's not just the left. A lot of conservatives as well have done business with China, knowingly that this stuff was going okay, on. Okay, that's no, wait, put, okay, okay. Thank you for that. And that's great. Now I'm going to move you along here and we're going to look at this other thing uh, that's uh, this other page. And I'm going to put this on here uh, because it has to do with clones. So cloning is a big area and a lot of people don't know anything about it. Uh, and there are certain people out there that have tried to expose it. Uh, and there's lots of suspicion that, for exam example, uh, there are clones of various leaders and so on. Russia has been involved in this uh, for, for many years, as you may know. So what do you have to say about clones in your book? Uh, is there any kind of key area you can talk about? I've got your your uh, page here talking about the corporations and various things, but they're involved in, in clones. So how successful do you think cloning is? Um, they've been able to clone. So that's, that's my answer to you. Some places have been able to clone. Um, so 
um, but it's not available for the public, right? But the danger of that is that the digital. So if you believe in a soul, if you have a soul and the human body gets a soul, then you have a soul. But if a clone will not have a soul, that means it can get hacked. Something else can come inside it, and it can be ten times more faster than the average person. And, and dangerous to the world. So um, that's why clones aren't good for anybody. But if it's not clones, then there's machines. It's not machines, robotics. It's or it's not that. It's a it's a disease. If some, it, that's why. Okay. I put, I put okay. The book. Then, then what are you aware of the Michael Crichton book called Prey? I should say you say you don't read a lot, but Prey was all about how nanobots can actually create a human being, any shape, whatever you want. Uh, and and then it can all they can all break ab uh, apart and and fly off like birds basically after they do that and and go become another human. I mean, in other words, so we have nanobots that are able to also replicate us in essence, even temporarily. Yes. You aware of that? I never heard the guy write his book, but yes, hundred percent. But you would need, you know. Any human being can actually do that if they opened the, the 10,000 energy lines in their body, changed the structure of, of, of their DNA, and even the composition will make up the cells. If I, This I've read, and I, I have some experience. Um, I can't do these things. I can't transform myself. I, can't, I've never, I was never able to do that. But um, there, you can change the composition of your cells, and – you can disappear, but that's nothing. There, there, there are powers that are even above that. But to break that down, you need two things. You open all the channels and you put something in those cells by yourself. You actually extract this, uh, this, this stuff that belongs in a different dimension, not regulated by our, our planetary system. And this, this require you to be able to, to develop quantum instead of you or technology can do it by breaking through the quantum dimension and pulling these things here at the microscopic realm, still at the molecular realms, but generated by the atomic realms, when that happens, then you can actually, yes, you can make somebody and then reform. All right. So that's the structure of it. But it, it can be done by the human body itself. A human being can do that. Um, but you'd have to put down all human emotions. You just can't be on the plane of a human being. All right. Uh, well, what we that's see today. very, very interesting. Okay. Now, uh, I want to ask you about the AI uh, rape mind, you call it. What are you talking about when you're talking about the AI rape mind? That's that's kind of a little bit too much for me to say at the moment. It's uh, too deep. It would take an hour to explain. So I'd rather right. pass on that one. Maybe on our a second interview, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to have something come out in a couple of days I've been working on for eight months, and it's going to explain something in, 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 a, in a way that's never been explained before, I think, uh, hopefully. But um, it, it's – yeah, it's just uh, – we're going on all these topics that – that is a 10,000-page book you're talking right. about. And we, we've been talking, I think, a little bit over an hour, and it, it just can't – if I go too much in, in these things, and it just – Okay. Um, uh, okay. I, I appreciate that. Um, can I can I ask you one last question, and then I, I I will let you go. I know I've kept you longer, but Cyrus, it's so fascinating to talk to you, and uh, and I, I just you know I want to ask you so many questions. So uh, you're talking about the neural circuits that are bio digitally reprogrammed like a replicating virus while connected to the human bio digital network which sounds like basically the human biodigital network is AI, it sounds to me, but you can, you know, clarify that. So when you're yeah. talking about that, that's basically rewiring us. Uh, it, isn't that correct? That's rewiring, but to explain that, those two sentences it would take a few hundred pages. Um, but one of the components of it is an AI, of course. Uh, but it's not describing the whole AI process. The replicating process can describe AI, but there's things that's beyond AI. AI and these things, these questions you want to ask me about, they're actually to other people it seem high level and great, but there, there's other components, higher levels as, at stake as well. These little things you're talking about, this AI stuff is actually low level. All right, uh, fair it, enough. It, okay, so it, are you talking uh, about? Are you aware of gaseous beings? Because uh, Mark Richards talks about gaseous beings that protect us. They are in the vicinity of Saturn, for example. Are you aware of that? Um, so, you know, we, we can't see. A lot of people can't see what's, what's around them. And there are a lot of things around us. 
that are in digital form and people can't see or sense it. And you shouldn't try to see or sense it because you don't know what you're seeing, what you sense, and they can connect with you and um, not supposed to connect with you. Um, it's the way it is at the moment, not supposed to. So that's that's just one plank. And then there is, yeah, there's beings, but then there's so many different levels. But what I'm trying to say, everyone, you seeing at home, you are more special. We are more special than these things that you want to connect with. We are actually more powerful, our innate selves, than these things that we're afraid of want to connect with. We shouldn't want to connect with them, actually. There is a plan that's set in. And the old plan was to, you know, have some kind of destruction and, and you know, goes to Iran and then the, the rapture is shown. That was the old plan. But then there's other things that are involved. And what's required of us is to become really ethical, moral people. But to directly answer your question of replicating software, yes, an AI system or something else can replicate within the human biological network. So within your biology, within your neural networks, and within the human network, which is something else as well. It's just so many of the interconnected things, and it involves 5G and 6G and 7G, and what I call the AI global biological network. And that's got three different levels, and there's other things as well. So All right, it's are just, you um, also uh, talking about discarnate entities, that sort of thing, Deme what some people call demons, et yes. cetera? So th there's, yes. there, there's that realm as well right yes okay. yes so, but they're nothing you know we shouldn't be afraid of that because uh like i said you sitting here talking to me you're a very special person and your audience listening in maybe someone got angry at me but they're very special people every person just because so maybe i said something and someone's like wow that guy's uh, full of it or maybe he has these whatever but still nothing you know, just because someone has a smartphone in their head doesn't make him wise. If I can do certain things a lot of people can't do, it doesn't make me anything special. What makes us special is our goodness in our hearts and for us to be good people. So no matter what kind of power you have, it's really nothing. Are there all innate abilities that exist in every single one of us because we were made in the image of God? So every single human being sitting at home today or around the world is really special and they should all be cherished every single human being, your family, your non-friends, whatever they are. Our innate nature is to be good. Our innate nature is to be kind. Our innate nature is to be harmonious with everything, not to lie and steal and cheat and outdo other people. And and that's that's what destroys the whole world. So that that's my message. It's all these things I'm talking about because I'm trying to get, get to get to get to a point. But yes, do we have huge dangers coming? I saw extinction patterns in the next 20 years and a huge events that are coming soon. And they came with this, it's not just this virus, there's something else is going to happen, then something else afterwards and then so on. But if we have faith and also repent and improve ourselves, then we have a good chance for for some a good future. So yes, the universe is very big. There's trillions and trillions of universes, parallel, parallel universes, trillions and trillions of planets and dimensions. And that's just like a little bit, still nothing. So, so grand, but don't forget, we are very special. You sitting home, don't forget what I said, and, and you as a host, you are special. Every single human being sitting today is special. So don't forget that and don't fear anything. All right. Try to work together. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Cyrus. Uh, it's very lovely to talk to you, and I appreciate all your information. I appreciate your, your work, and I hope that we can bring you back on the show. I'm very interested in the announcement you want to make in one or two days or whenever it is. So let's, uh, let's basically pin that and say that you will come back. Is that right? Yeah, I will come back. Please follow me on Twitter, um, C-Y-R-U-S-A-P-A-R-S-A-1. If you if you want to donate, if, if 10,000 people listen to it, $5, that would just help a lot. I've, 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 I think I've got about 15 grand in, or 10 grand in donations the past few months. And you know, to, to go after these companies, which I'm not going to do anymore, I don't think, because this pandemic, I was trying to prevent things, and it didn't happen because I didn't get backed. So if I can just get retweets on something that's going to come out soon, and I will come back on your show when I want to apologize to you if I was a little bit strong or rude in certain certain aspects. It wasn't intended for you, but it was intended for 
the people who have been, you know, still undermining me behind the scenes. And I'm doing this not for myself. I don't care about the fame. If a 7 billion people like me or dislike me, it doesn't move me at all. I just did it in altruism when I felt everybody is in danger. So if you look at what I did in these thousand companies I investigated and all these things I did, I had a purpose behind it. And I'm just one person. You know, I, I'm not I'm not no God or something. I'm just a person. And just like you. And and sure. um, if we put our heart in something, we can we can do great things. And I need help. Without you, I am nothing. Someone doesn't tweet me. Someone didn't donate. Um, someone didn't help me fix my lighting because they one got scared and left away or do these uh, edits. I wouldn't be able to do anything. So some things that my my brain can't figure out because I, I do things. I have to explain to you later because it's just too much. <laughs> but I want to thank you for having me come on your show. And you can get the book. I just recommend getting Artificial Intelligence to Humanity. Download it directly from the link that you have. And and on her website, or you can come to my website, theaiorganizers.com. I have videos on the, on the website called The AI Organization uh, Channel on YouTube. I've got 11 of those. And I, I didn't realize um, that I could say so much on your show. And on the next show, I'm going to say things that are really, really explosive and very explosive. And um, maybe you'll want to have me come back on in a few days really fast. So okay, that, we'll see. That- Thank yeah, that you. sounds thank, good. Thank now, I just want to say one thing to you. There is, uh, people are saying a financial meltdown uh, coming, and uh, that's even more than what I guess is already happening. Uh, so I did, you know, I also want, if you come back on the show, that we can also talk about, because the financial AI, the financial aspect of the AI is a very big one, obviously, and, and you, we haven't really touched on that. Are you, do you have knowledge in this area? Yes, I also put that it, it sinks in with the financial system. I also put so in my book, I put into the digital ID. I show the future, like this whole Bill Gates thing. Um, it's already in the book. It it the steps. It shows you, as I said, it's present, emerging, and future threats, step by step, even to the virus, then, then the digital ID. Da, 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 even the book, if you look at it, it's like almost in sequence. <laughs> so. Um, it, once we so you should not hook up the the finance system to an AI system. You can't have a digital currency. You can't have this crypto. That's when you get enslaved. You have to have physical cash and physical gold, because when you have a digital currency, then it's not with you. It can be taken away at any time for any reason by a government, a company, or it can just be hacked, or the internet can come down, whatever it may be. And everyone's, oh, what do I do? What do I do? So we have to go back to how we were designed, unless everybody on the planet is like Zeus and has supernatural powers and don't have to eat, da 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 da, uh, or uh, made basically like angels. So we are made in the image of God. That means in that realm, if, it, if you're a Catholic, you have a light body. If you're if you're a Christian, you ascend and you go back to Christ's world. If you're a fallen off, you ascend, you you enlighten. If you're Tibetan, so on, so on. Everybody has the same goals, right? So, but we we as a human race, we can't make everything digital. And these people sitting right now, sorry, I I, I want to be working uh, next to President Trump and advise him because these people working right now in the AI department, they grew up in this PhD stuff. They grew up as engineers. They have the really, I'm sorry, three or four percent they use and they're endangering everybody because they look at the science as just part and part that the, that makes everyone's life better. But no, it threatens everybody. Look at the virus. And that's the first thing. The next steps is a thousand times more dangerous than this virus. This virus is actually nothing. Well, no, it can kill a lot of people. But these people, the tech guys and the PhD guys, they cannot be sitting and being uh, advisors or the CTOs of the AI departments in the White House. They cannot be getting information from AI companies and big tech companies that can form their knowledge and make the AI reg- regulations because they don't, I'm sorry, they don't have the wisdom or intelligence or the understanding of what is really artificial, narrow, general, and super intelligent, how it interconnects with everything, how it takes everybody out. And they endanger every single one of you. All your family members sitting at home are being endangered by the interconnection of this media. These big tech companies and these AI regulators. Okay, now we we need to talk. Okay, next time we need to talk also about the Internet of Things and how AI can actually jump 
from, you know, your toaster to your this to your that. And people don't understand that aspect either. So they think that things are, you know, if they're separate, if they're off the internet, unplugged from the wireless and so on, they're safe and they're not safe. I already know that. No, um, no they're not. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that next time as well. Sorry uh, that we, ha- we didn't have time for everything, but it is a big list of subjects that you really deal with. So thank you again, Cyrus. Uh, have a great day. And everyone else, thanks for being here and take care. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. bye-bye.